Now that we have some knowledge about how um, work and kinetic energy works, um, this is a good time to revisit collisions. So recall that in a collision, uh, we can assume that momentum is conserved. Okay, which means that the initial momentum equals the final momentum. Right? As a vector quantity, momentum is conserved, so both the magnitude and direction. Um, and the reason for that is because the um, collision is short in time, which means that no other forces really have enough time to exert a significant impulse. Well, um, it turns out that we can think of collisions as also conserving kinetic energy in some cases. Um, specifically, elastic collisions will have that property. Okay, so um, the kinetic energy in a collision that is perfectly elastic will be the same after as it is um, at first. So the initial equals final. Okay, and that is, remember, a scalar, so we don't have to worry about um, the you know, directions of anything in order to talk about the kinetic energy being conserved. Um, so you might wonder, why should that be the case? Well, the argument for why momentum was conserved was because of Newton's third law. So the two objects are exerting equal and opposite forces on each other for equal and opposite times. Um, that same basic idea is true for, um, you know, considering work, because uh, during the collision, they will be exerting equal and opposite forces on each other, and we might expect that the points of contact will move the same amount as well. Okay, so um, it makes some sense that the work on A by B is going to be equal and opposite to the work on B by A. Okay. Forces are opposite directions, but the displacements are the same. Um, okay, so other types of collisions um, don't conserve kinetic energy. So we could have inelastic collisions, um, which reduce the kinetic energy, um, or explosive, which increase the kinetic energy. Um, but for an elastic collision, we can treat the kinetic energy as being conserved. Okay, and that's really nice because um, that gives us another formula. So um, we can solve two equations and two variables. So if we consider a one-dimensional equation, we have two unknown speeds and now two formulas for um, calculating them. So um, a lot of times that can be another nice way to approach a collision problem rather than converting from one frame to another. It turns out you get the same answer whether you uh, conserve kinetic energy or whether you convert to that center of mass frame.